Okay, let us uh, open with a word of prayer, and then we'll start our service way away. Father God, we are so privileged, so thankful to be here. Especially during this Christmas season, that we might us the great sacrifice you have done for us so that we can have this true peace and joy that you have prepared for us. Father, there may be war and uh, our life stress and everything that is happening to us and sometimes hard for us to take, but Father, we are in your presence now. Let us set this aside. We we'll come to you because we find strength in your presence. And may you open our hearts, open our minds to receive your words. And help us, Lord, to love you back as you have loved us so much. But we want to honor you. We come to you in spirit and in truth. And may you enjoy our worship. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Let's turn our worship in songs.
by reading his scripture. And today's scripture is in Luke 2, verses 8 to 14. Let us read it together. And there were shepherds, shepherds living out of the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Christ, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, service next Sunday too, right? I think so. It's on my calendar. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, it's it's so awesome. I, you know, I get, around Christmas, I get just like a kid again. I, I do. I, I'm like the first one up in the morning and all that. Well, sort of. When my kids were smaller, maybe they were. Yeah, I am I'm, uh, excited to have my family with me here today. And uh, glad they could join us. My my son Tyrone, who's a youth pastor in Abbotsford, and uh, my daughter Kristen. Who, sorry guys, I got to tell you now, he's married. And she has a boyfriend, so I'm sorry. Uh, off the market. Uh, and but I'll keep you posted on what happens with Kristen. Okay. Of course, my mom has been here before, and my mother and father-in-law. You notice they're sitting far away from me. That might tell you something. But. Uh, <laughs> They're with us for Christmas, and that's just uh, just wonderful. Praise the Lord. Um, looking forward to the retreat this week. Really am. Um, I encourage you to come out. We are going to have a good time. You know, it's, it's an evening, so we'll be able to uh, maybe uh, be, stay a little longer around the altars. We're going to have uh, expecting the Holy Spirit to do some great works in uh, this Wednesday and Thursday. So uh, just try to be out for that and invite somebody. And let's see, let's God let's see what the Lord to end our year and start the new year with just a, a real move of the Spirit among us. Amen. 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 And uh, you know, this is, <laughs> these next two Sundays are kind of weird for me because officially I uh, become your pastor on January first. So the next two weeks I'm here strictly as a guest speaker. So it's just kind of weird. But I, I tell you something. This has been like six or Sundays, Sundays or something I've been here this year. And when I walked in here this morning, something new happened in my heart. I felt like this was home. Every other time I still felt like, yeah, I knew we were going through the process. And the last time I was here, we made the announcement. But I still felt like this was, I was like a, a guest, you know, getting to know people. But when I came here today, I felt this is home. And I, I'm excited about that and looking forward to it. So uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, God bless you all. Well, wanna, it's funny, the scripture you read up there is, is part of the text that I want to speak on this morning. I want to talk about joy to the world. Joy to the world. So we're just going to pick up in that uh, scripture that we read earlier. We already read through verse 14. So we'll pick up verses 15 through 20. Uh, of Luke chapter 2. Okay, we've got the, let's get the scriptures. Okay, there was the first part and the next one. And so let's, um, okay, go back, go back one. There we go. It says, when the angels had left them and gone into the heavens, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off. Next, uh, next slide. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, 
which is just as they had been told. Joy, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all the people, for unto you this day has been born a Savior, a Messiah, Christ the Lord. Isn't that wonderful news? You know, we live in a world full of so much bad news. You know, you really, if you sit down, you turn on the news on TV, or you, you check a, a news website on the internet, and all you hear is bad news. Just try it sometimes. Look at, you know, open up a, a news site and see how many of the news stories are, are bad news. And somewhere in there you might find a little neat little story, but something good happened. But our world is full of bad news. But that's why it's so good to focus on good news. And the good news, the word gospel actually means good news. So we know the gospel is good news, but this time, especially at Christmas, it is a time to focus on this wonderful news that God came in human flesh. That the Son of God, the Savior of this world, uh, of, of, of all mankind, came to this earth and was born as a baby. God made his appearance in the world. That's great news. Amen? <coughs> so I want to take a look at this story with the shepherds and the good news and, and see what we can learn from how they reacted to this news. First thing I want you to notice is this all happened at a time when there was little joy. Look at Israel. For one thing, there had been no word for God for 400 years. 400 years between uh, the end of uh, the Old Testament and the uh, birth of Jesus. Imagine that, 400 years. No, nobody had came and was able to speak to the people and say, God has something to say. The nation of Israel at the time was under Roman occupation. They were being occupied by a foreign power that, get this now, that imposed taxes on them. Now, nobody likes taxes, right? I mean, nobody here likes taxes. Eh? Well, you know. and, uh, but at least we know, eh, careful now, don't go into politics. At least we know, theoretically, our taxes we pay go to benefit us. They provide roads, hospitals, etc., etc., etc. In those days, the taxes were all taken to Rome. So the local people got no benefit from it at all. Freedoms were restricted. And even the religious leaders of the, of the Jews were under the thumb of the legal authorities. <coughs> kind of remind me a bit of COVID, didn't it? <laughs> um, so it was, it was a very bad situation. It was also, there was not a lot of good news in the lives of these shepherds. At the time, shepherds were considered a lowly occupation. Shepherds were kind of considered, uh, you know, these, these, these dirty guys who live out among the sheep and they don't make a lot of money and they're kind of you know, a, a lower class of society. And get this, not only did they have a job, I mean, out with the sheep, but it says they were working the night shift. Now, if you've ever worked night shifts, I mean, my wife's a nurse, she worked night shifts for years, and she hated them. I hated them too, because I had to sleep alone, imagine that. But she hated working, that threw your body clock off and everything, but not only were they working the night shift, they were working outside on the night shift. Imagine that. And then, not only were they working outside, it says they were living there. Not only were they out caring for the sheep, they were living with the sheep. I mean, that's, that's not a very good life to have. Maybe you can relate to some of that today. Maybe you don't like your job. I won't ask for a raise of hands. Because I might put mine up. Just <laughs> Would that be embarrassing? Maybe you don't like your working conditions. Maybe you're working inconvenient hours. Or maybe you're not happy with your living situation. Maybe you're not happy where you live and who you live with or the, the place you're in. Also in our world today, there is still a lot of bad news. You look at what's going on in our world. You know, one of the things that's close to my heart is... Our, is our, our, our missions organization that I, I head up. We have uh, works in Ukraine and in Israel. So my heart has definitely uh, been in those places. You see, you know, and, 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 and with all the deals with our economy, with inflation and, and all these other things going on, there's a lot of bad news in the world. So in some ways, it may be not quite as bad as it was then, but we might be able to relate 
to a situation where there's just not a lot of joy around, either in our world or in our own lives. This was the situation to these shepherds. There wasn't a lot of joy. But the next thing we see in this story, in the midst of all this joylessness, there came a message of joy. An angel appeared. Imagine that. No word from God in 400 years, and suddenly there's an angel. You know what the word angel means? A messenger of God. So after 400 years of God being silent, an angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone around them. They were, of course, freaked out, right? Wouldn't you be? Then it says, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy. Amen. In the midst of a joyless world, in the midst of their joyless life situation, suddenly there was God's messenger appearing with this incredible news. A Savior has come. The Messiah, the one that they have been waiting for for centuries among the Jewish people, he had arrived. God had not forgotten his people. On earth there would be peace on whom his favor rests. There was peace. There was joy. You see, the message of Jesus brought joy into a joyless situation. Into their joyless lives. Out there under Roman occupation, paying taxes that was going to, to benefit Rome in a very low paying job, having to work the night shift outdoors and having to live with a bunch of smelly sheep. And suddenly an angel says, there's good news for you. Jesus has come. The Messiah has been born. The one you've long waited for. And not only is he coming, but he's bringing joy and he's going to bring peace on whom God's favor rests. I got some great news for you today, my friend. No matter what's going on in our world, no matter what's going on in your life, that there is good news today. There is good news that could cause you and I to have great joy no matter what our circumstances are. And that is this, that a Savior has come to the world. And we can know Him. He came and became one of us, experienced life as we do. He went to the cross, died uh, for our sins to reconcile us to God, and He rose again and lives forevermore. That's good news. And He takes us who are lost in our sin, cleanses us, makes us born again into the family of God and, and gives us a promise of eternity in heaven with God. He comes to abide in our hearts and walk with us every day and hear our prayers and answer our prayers and do miracles. Is that not good news? Yes. Amen. And that news should give us great joy. For no matter what happens in our lives, and, and I'm not trying to be extreme, saying Christians should always go around with a permanent smile on their face and nothing should ever bother us. But I know this, no matter what happens in our lives, can't change what Jesus has done for us. Can't change our home in heaven. Can't change the fact that we are forgiven. Can't change the fact that we are children of God. Amen. And yes, it doesn't mean we don't have difficulties and we don't, and sometimes those difficulties may get us down a bit, but we know on the inside we have an eternal joy. Do you know what the difference is? Joy is independent of circumstances. Happiness, happiness comes from circumstances. I mean, we're human. That's the way the world is. Something good happens to us, we get excited. Something bad, well, we're, we're not happy. You know, let's say I was to wake up tomorrow morning. My wife says, honey, your Christmas gift is wrapped up out in the driveway for you. And I walked up there and there's a brand new Ferrari sitting there right in my driveway. She goes, I've been saving up money for years and I just really wanted to show you how much I love you and here's, here's your car. Okay, boy, would I ever be happy. i jump up and down, I'd be so excited. So I take that car, I'm so excited with that car. And I go out and I drive, I get on the highway and I go, Lord, you know, I got to test this thing out, right? So you forgive me for this one time. So I take off as fast as I can go, go off the road, roll the car over, and the car gets completely written off. Suddenly all my happiness is gone. Okay? That's why happiness goes. Joy is independent of circumstances. Joy comes from what God has done in my life. Who I am in Christ, what His promises are. And nothing that can ever happen to you or I could ever take away that joy. There's a message of joy. 
for those in a hopeless situation. It's why the hymn writer wrote, Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Hallelujah. When I was growing up, I used to wonder who this angel named Harold was. Hark, Harold, the angel sings. Oh, come on, laugh, please. It's Christmas. <laughs> they got a message of joy. Thirdly, they went to experience the reason for this joy. They just didn't sit there and, yeah, angels came. Isn't that good news? It says, when the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. See, it wasn't good enough to hear the message of joy. They had to have an encounter with the reason for the joy wasn't good enough to hear a Savior has been born in Bethlehem. They had to go and meet his Savior. They had to go where he was. And yes, as, as the Word of God, and we, we can declare to people, at Christmas, one of the great things about Christmas is the message of this joy is heard far and wide. You know, one of the amazing things about Christmas, I notice it every year. When you go out shopping, if, if you dare, um, you hear, sometimes, you will hear, Worship songs at the mall. I was in a mall there. There wasn't a Christian store, and I heard, "Oh, come all ye faithful! Oh, come, let us adore Him." How often do you hear that? A worship song played in a in a shopping center, but at Christmas you do. Silent night. You ever hear that playing? So in this world where we're, we're being bombarded during this month of this wonderful news of joy, yet so many people hear that message, and yet they don't still have joy in their lives because they don't go encounter the one who brings that joy. It's not good enough just to hear the message. It's not good enough just to sing about it. It's not good enough just to be aware of it intellectually. But in order to have this kind of joy that's independent of circumstances, you need to have an encounter with the one who brings the joy. Hearing the message isn't enough. You need to have a personal encounter with Jesus. Not enough even to say I'm a Christian or I go to this church or I sing these hymns or anything. But you need to have a personal encounter with Jesus in your life. He comes into your life, becomes your Lord and Savior. You communicate with Him. You're constantly uh, hearing from Him. That's where the joy comes. You need joy in your life this Christmas, here's my advice to you. Go spend some time with the baby of Bethlehem. Let's go spend some time with him. You know what I do every, every year around this time? I read the Christmas story all over again. Every single year I do it. Just so I can become, well, I mean, I, I read the Bible every day throughout the year, but at this time I read particularly the Christmas story so I can become better acquainted with this baby of Bethlehem. Because when I encounter him in my life, I have joy. Again, words of a Christmas carol. Come to Bethlehem and see he whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Glory to the most excellent deity. Have an encounter with Christ. That will bring joy. Fourth thing we see in the story, this is the part I found most interesting. They returned with joy. It says, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard. Okay, let me give you a couple thoughts about that. <coughs> they returned with joy. They returned praising God. Yet, do you notice, Jesus never did one thing for them. What did he do? They went to the manger, looked at it. He might have cooed a little bit at them. Babies, you know, newborns, they don't do a lot for you. In fact, when these two showed up, they made my life more difficult. <laughs> They're still doing it to a certain extent. But really, what has an infant ever done for you? Nothing. 
Jesus didn't answer their prayer. He didn't change anything about them. He didn't do anything special in their life whatsoever. But yet they returned with joy just because they'd spent time in his presence. And get this. They returned to their same life, same jobs, same home. It wasn't like they're, you know, people often, often say, and it is true, and I'm not debating that, you know, Jesus changed my life. Well, these guys, their lives weren't changed one little bit. They went back to the sheepfold. They went back to the night shift. They went back to living with the sheep. They didn't get a new job. They didn't get a raise. They didn't get better working conditions. They didn't get a better place to live. None of these things changed in their lives. But encountering Jesus brought them joy. Jesus never did a thing for them. Nothing changed. And I think too often... As, as believers, we begin to, you know, the, the things that cause us to worship, and, and we should be thankful. Oh, believe me, I'm, I'm a big, big fan of testimonies. I love, praise God for the things He had done. But too often our experience with God rests on what He has done, rather than who He is. They were like, we've been, we've seen God in the flesh, we've seen the Messiah, and they return all excited, praising God even though nothing in their life has changed. You know, maybe in your life this Christmas, maybe there's not a lot of joy. Maybe you've been praying and you still haven't got the answers to prayer that you're expecting. But even if nothing changes in our lives, we can still experience joy this Christmas just because we have met Him. Because we've been in His presence. You've stared at his face. Yes, when God does something great, uh, yeah, we should thank him and express that. But again, this, this inner joy we have, I said it's independent of circumstances, and that includes it's independent of blessings from God. And yes, we should celebrate blessings from God. We should thank him for everything we have and everything we do. And, and, and you know, when he blesses us beyond, we should give him maximum glory. Yes. <clears throat> But even if nothing changes in our lives, we can still have joy simply because who He is. We have seen Him. The one the prophets spoke about. The one the angels spoke about. If you're here this morning and you have a personal relationship with Jesus, that in itself is reason for joy. Amen. The last point. Wouldn't you love it when a preacher says the last point? Sometimes that can mean another <coughs> half an hour, so don't get too excited. <coughs> they spread the joy. What it says. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. See, they took literally the message of the angel. Look at what the message of the angel was. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. It wasn't just that they would experience this joy to themselves. They went and spread it to others. See, the message of Christmas, the joy that we have, is not something we can keep to ourselves. You know, there's a story in the Old Testament. It's an interesting story. It's in 2 Kings chapter 7. The, the city of Samaria was being was under attack by the Arameans, and the city was under siege. And they had a blockade. They had a blockade around the city so nothing could go in and out of the city. And uh, the people in there were literally starving, and things were pretty bleak. You're surrounded by this hostile army. Not, you can't uh, get anything in and out. There's food is running out. Basic supplies are running out. The people are in a desperate situation. Outside the city, it says outside the city gates, there were four lepers. Now they were, had leprosy, so they couldn't live inside the city. So they were sitting outside the gates by themselves. Finally, one of them gets, a, gets a, a, an idea. He says, guys, what are we doing just sitting here? We're starving to death. You can imagine, if there's no food in the city, there's nothing getting out to these lepers, right? So if we sit here, we're just going to starve to death. So why don't we go to the enemy's camp? Who knows? They might kill us. 
but we're going to starve anyway. But they might take pity on us and give us a few morsels of food. Why not? Let's, why don't we just go there just to see? We've got no, in other words, we have nothing to lose, right? So they get up and they go out to the camp. Here's what they did not know. The night before, the Lord had sent his angel and had scared the enemy off. The Lord had come and sent an angel and scared them. And they all, they, everyone in the enemy's camp, all their soldiers, commanders, everybody, got up in the night and fled for their lives. They thought they were being attacked by a mighty army. So these lepers, they go out there. And when they get there, they, um, when they get there, they find the place is empty. But they've left everything behind. They go there, there's lots of food. You know, kind of like your Christmas banquet here if you, a few weeks ago we were at. Or two weeks ago. And there's food everywhere. So they're sitting there enjoying the food. They find all these nice clothes. You'd have been happy. And, uh, you know, so they're trying out all these really nice clothes and, 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 and you know, and all these other things and eating jewelry, put, putting jewelry all over themselves. And they thought, this is awesome. We're having, wow, we're just having a feast. We have, there's only four of us. We have this whole camp to ourselves and they're just enjoying it. All of a sudden, it says, verse 9 of, of 2 Kings 7, then they said to each other, what we're doing is not right. This is a day of good news and we are keeping it to ourselves. Let me repeat that. What we are doing is not right. This is a day of good news, and we are keeping it to ourselves. Now, it's true that believers should always be looking for opportunities and finding opportunities to, shed the, to share the good news of Jesus, but what about Christmas? I bring you good news of great joy, the angel said. And yet, to many of us, we are keeping it to ourselves. You know, one thing about Christmas is you get lots of other opportunities. I think, I think Christmas is a prime time to share the gospel with other people. People are already kind of focused a little bit on, you know, even if they aren't believers or whatever, they still, you know, you see things, uh, they put decorations up in their houses and, and all these things. What a great time to share joy. Let me tell you something about my family and I. Something we do every year. We've been doing this for over 20 years now. 23 years, I think it is. And we were out last night. Every year, we always go around and deliver Christmas gifts to all of our neighbors. Last night, oh, eight? eight? Eight places. We usually do it 23rd, 24th, somewhere like that. So we went last night. I'm sure you got a couple pictures here. Put them up. This was the gifts for the neighbors we had in our house. Next one I put up, this one particularly, we went, our neighbor's right to the next door of us. Next picture. This is a Sikh family. Okay, they live right next door to us. We go to their place every single year with Christmas gifts. And it's usually, you know, this year my, my daughter is pretty creative with things. So she had made this with her wood burning things with the family name on and on. But there's always something in there about Jesus and the reason for Christmas. You know, it's interesting, this family last night. They invited us back to their place next Sunday evening for one of their religious festivals. Am I going to go? You betcha. Now, what other opportunity would we have? Now, we can't go to their door in the middle of, of uh, July and just say, knock, knock, here's something about Jesus. I mean, I wish we could, but a lot, not a lot of people are open to that, right? But none of our neighbors, including the guy across the street, he's an atheist. And we give them their presents and they're happy to receive them. They give us a little something back too. But let me tell you one amazing story. There was one family, they've since, uh, they're not there anymore, but they used to live kitty corner to us. Family from Eastern Europe. And we would go and deliver the presents to them every year. And, and when my dad, my, my, when my dad was still alive, my parents lived in our, our basement apartment. And one day the lady, an older couple, she came over to our house. And she met my dad. When she knocked on the door, my dad was home. So she looked at my dad and she said, your family are Christians, right? Dad said, yes, we are. Yeah, I said, I know, because every Christmas, your son and his family bring around something about Jesus to give to us. Yeah. And she says, my husband just come back 
from the doctor, he has cancer, and he only has six weeks to live. Would you come over and pray for him? Now, I don't have a great healing story for you, okay? So, But I got something better. So Dad goes over to their home, talks with him, prays with him, but then he asks him if he'd ever accepted Christ as his Savior. The man said no. And right there, Dad led him to Jesus. And a few weeks later, he passed away, and he's in heaven today. Now, I'm not taking this. It's mostly my wife's idea, to be honest with you. But just taking advantage of Christmas to share the good news. You know, we don't, I mean, how many times are we going to get greeted, you know? I mean, we do, do know this family reasonably well. They live next door, but they are so excited when we come. We have people all around us, different faith backgrounds, different stages in, in life, and, and all that. And yet we just go and give them something else, you know, a little gift, something that they'll appreciate. And, but it's also always something about Jesus in there. Because it's a day of good news. We can't keep it to ourselves. So I encourage you, take advantage of this season. It's the one time people are probably more open to hearing the message at any other time of year. And we talk about you want joy? Here's a scripture verse to contemplate. Luke 15 and verse 10. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. You know the greatest way you can bring joy to your life, to someone else's life, to the world, and to heaven is by bringing someone <coughs> to Jesus. What a way to share the joy of Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know, Christmas we, is Jesus' birthday. Probably didn't happen December 25th, but that doesn't really matter. Wonder, if you were to ask Jesus, what do you want for your birthday? There are a lot of things. He likes our worship. He, he likes when we give our time and our talents and our resources to Him. And he all appreciates all of those things, but the number one thing Jesus would want for his birthday is to bring a lost soul to him. This is a day of good news. We cannot keep it to ourselves. Well, there's so many, one my, again, one of my favorite Christmas carols is Go Tell It on the Mountains. Over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountains. What? That Jesus Christ is born. So what am I saying to you this morning? Hear the message of joy. Not a lot of joy in your life right now? Hear the message. Good news of great joy. God bless. A Savior has been born. Christ the Lord, He is here. God came and lived among us and died to make us right with God. That's great news, friends. It's the best news you'll ever hear in your life. You need to hear the message. You need to encounter the cause of joy. Go and spend some time with this Jesus. Pray to him. Listen to him. Enjoy his presence. Experience that joy. Even without anything changing in your life, you can still have joy. And let's go spread the joy. That Christmas of all, let's go tell everybody who Jesus is, what he's done for us, and what he can do in their lives. You don't have to be preachy about it. You don't have to be aggressive about it. But just share the good news. We can't keep it to ourselves. I'm going to ask Tim and the worship team to come back. And we're going to sing again that song that we opened the service with, Joy to the World. The Lord, he, that's the news of great joy. <laughs> that's the news that we ought to be celebrating and spreading. Amen. Let's spread the news of great joy. Let's spread the news of great joy. Let's all stand together. Let's see. It. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive our King.
joyous time. And we can't keep it to ourselves. Well, I think we got a couple more, a couple other things just happening here quickly. I think the children have some presents for all of us. And I think they're waiting. I see someone waiting outside the door. Are we ready? Um, if not, while we wait for them, I forgot to do something earlier. I, I told my son I was going to ask him to come here and share a few words with us. And uh, he, uh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, someone asked his son again. He's a, he's a youth pastor at Old Brook Community Church. And uh, Ty, come up here and just say a few words of reading to the folk. And then you can close us in prayer as well. All right? Okay. So do we, do we look like? <laughs> Who looks better? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. As uh, he said, uh, I I think I'm his son. We'll uh, believe that for now. Uh, yeah, I'm a youth pastor in Abbotsford, uh, small group, and yeah, this past year. I am not kidding when I say this guy has not shut up about uh, Burnaby. <laughs> he says he, he used to come here, he'd come back excited every single time he'd come out and speak. And yeah, it's like every time I'd come over and just say hi, he'd just go, oh, you got to hear about, you know, what God's doing in this church. And it, it's really encouraging to see, you know, me being here and seeing, even though, you know, it's like it may not be like a Broadway multi, you know, 100, 200, 300 per service, but, you know... Amazing things come just from when a group of people are gathered together. And it's like you see a lot of times that God has done amazing things just through just a couple people. So it's not always just about numbers. And I think definitely the kids are here. But why don't we just uh, all uh, close together in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we praise your name. We thank you for everything that you are and everything that you do. Lord, as we go through this Christmas season, Lord, we thank you for this night and what this day symbolizes. Lord, that as we gather together with family and friends and we sit, that not only would you be the center of our Christmas, but Lord, that this Christmas would be so infectious to us that we would want to spread the news of just your birth and what you had done and what you still continue to do and who you are everywhere we go. So I pray a special blessing over this church and the wonderful people here and the stories that each of them have and the plan that you have for each and every soul here. And Lord, we pray a special blessing over every single one and a special blessing over this Christmas. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.